What's up and welcome back to another live stream unboxing review test dur not durability testing we're not doing durability testing we are doing all sorts of testing on this but no durability testing today uh, but we are going to be testing the display we're going to be benchmarking this thing we're going to be uh, testing the keyboard, the mouse, the Windows Hello, the webcam. We're going to be taking the bottom off. We're going to see what the internals look like, what the upgradeability is going to be like on this thing. And we're going to see what the performance is with this RTX 4060 for 1449. Now, we uh, we did have the Gigabyte G5, which I did an unboxing with. We had some issues with it with the power adapter and some other stuff. And then this is clearly not as premium a device as the Zephyrus G16. That is very clear to me. And I think the the other big thing is uh, pricing. Like this thing's cheaper. This thing is fourteen forty nine. So it's a three hundred and fifty dollar price difference between these two devices. And so we're gonna be trying to answer the question: Is it worth spending the extra three hundred and fifty bucks for the Zephyrus G sixteen versus the Gigabyte G five? So that's one of the questions we're gonna try to go for today. Uh, this does have a higher power limit. It does have a better CPU. This does have 16 gigs of RAM. This has a better display. This has Windows Hello. Those are like five really nice features to have for $350 more. So there's a lot of um, going back and forth that I think these two are going to have in terms of value versus performance. But uh, yeah, we'll have to see how everything shakes out today. Now, this is a little higher wattage, 120 watt. The, the Gigabyte G5 is only 75 watt, 4060. So this is, should, in theory, be a lot faster, especially in Time Spy and in some general gaming. And then hopefully we're not going to run into stuttering with this being 16 gigs of DDR4, 3200 megahertz RAM. And the Gigabyte G5 only had one stick of 8 gigs of RAM, which is just not, as, which is just not enough for some modern games to play smoothly, right? So anyway, I'm really excited about this because uh, I know the Zephyrus lineup is a great laptop lineup. So the let's go over all the key specs and we'll talk about the primary competitors versus the G16 before we get started. Yeah, it's 120 watt with dynamic boost, I believe, but we're gonna see how it actually performs because some, some 120 watts only get 120 watts in extremely rare circumstances, but hopefully this boost is 120 watt pretty often, but maybe it'll only be a hundred watt in most games. We're going to find out. I believe it's 100 plus 20. Um, so here's my laptop list. I have a top deals for gaming laptops available now. Uh, these are going to be ordered uh, laptops that you can order right away. So I would, for example, put the Strix G18 in here. If it was in stock, it'll come up into this list. But the very best laptops that I think offer the best bang for the buck in the current laptop lineup space uh, are going to be in this top deal. So that means laptops that are on sale for RTX 3000 laptops, because right now those deals are only going to be here for a little while. And eventually all the RTX 3000 laptops are going to be pretty much sold out, except for maybe they're going to probably keep making 3050s and maybe 3060s. But like the 3070, 3070 Ti, those laptops are going to go away when they all sell out eventually here, say within a few months, maybe even six months from now, they won't be available. You'll only be able to buy them used. So uh, the downside to the RTX 3000 laptops, of course, no frame generation and less power efficient. They don't have the new ADA, the four nanometer and ADA, ADA architecture. So, um, so yeah, just going over these top deals, we got the Lenovo Legion 5. This guy has got a good amount of value, um, a decent display, for, especially for the price. Uh, so right now it's 1249, but you get a two terabytes of SSD space for that. And it's got a Ryzen 7 6800H. So that's a, I feel like that's a good value for the, the price. The Zephyrus G16, this is the laptop that we are currently looking at unboxing today. And this guy is uh, got an i7-13620H RTX 4060 up to 120 watts. Supposedly, we're going to test that. 16 gigs of DDR4-3200, 512 gig SSD, and it's a full HD uh, plus, so 16 by 10. Uh, 165 hertz, 100% sRGB, and supposed to be 300 nits. Again, we're going to test that with my display checker, and we'll see how bright it is and how colorful it is. Now, this is very portable device, weighing only 4.4 pounds. So a 16-inch device weighing 4.4 pounds, that's extremely lightweight for a 16-inch device, especially one that features as nice of uh, parts as this one. So if you wanted to actually pick this one up, I believe it's still in stock. Uh, over here on Best Buy. So there's a link on the video description down below to 
the Zephyrus G16. And you can check out this laptop comparison sheet right here that I'm pulling all these links off of and jumping around on. Uh, there is so much information on this sheet and we're gonna keep adding more and more. But basically every single RTX 4000 series laptop that you can buy right now is on this sheet. And many of them have reviews and ratings, uh, benchmark data, um, tons of links in here for benchmark sources. And you can see all these time spy numbers and Cinebench numbers. Uh, and we're gonna keep adding more and more data into this and we're gonna be updating this daily. So uh, if you wanna follow this list, you can get daily updates for all the changes and new laptops that come into stock or things that are added to the list. Um, and we do send that out every day, pretty much. So, so yeah. Um, yeah, I think the other big standout one is this Legion 5 right now with the 3070 Ti. Um, it does not, again, not no frame gen, but 1499 with a two terabyte SSD. The two terabyte SSD is really what pushes me over the top uh, for thinking this Legion 5 has got a lot of value. Another great competitor for the Zephyrus G16 that we're looking at, probably the number one competitor I think right now is this MSI Pulse 15. It's got an i7-13620H, so the same processor. RTX 4060, 140 watts, supposedly. Supposed to go to 140 watts, so faster than this one. Um, 16 gigs of RAM, DDR5, 5200. So faster DDR5 memory than this one. A one terabyte SSD, which is bigger than the one that's in this one. Right? This is only a 512 gig SSD. And most importantly, this has a QHD 165 hertz display with a high color gamut. So all of those things factored together, and I. I think from a raw specs perspective, in some ways the Pulse is better than the Zephyrus G16, but you are getting some nice things on this G16 here that we can have a high level of confidence in, like the, the build quality, I believe is very nice on the G16. The keyboard and the trackpad are excellent, and the portability and Windows Hello is also great on here. So uh, there's a lot of pros and cons bouncing around here, um, but uh, overall, I'm really looking forward to checking out this G16. The 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 last let's see here the last couple deals on here to talk about would be the Aura 17H RTX 4080. It's only 150 watt 4080, but it does perform. Downside of this one only a full HD 360 hertz display. So get this one maybe if you're into esports games. This one should perform well for that. Um, the Aura 17H. Uh, it, I mean it'll do fine for other types of games too, but being only a full HD display rather than QHD at a 17 inch size, I think is a drawback. Um, yeah, that said, we do have the Omen 17 with a 4080 for $23.99. So almost the, the next cheapest 4080 here is the Omen 17. And uh, if you jump up to an RTX 4090, it is $29.49 for a QHD 165 Hertz display. I think this is a really great bang for the buck, especially since you get 5,600 megahertz RAM on this guy. Um, yeah, I've ordered one of these. I'm gonna be reviewing it and seeing how good it actually is. I did see it in person at CES and it seemed like it was a decent build quality laptop. I didn't spend too much time with it, but it's got a nice port selection and nice feature set. As long as it can deliver the level of performance that uh, you know I'm hoping it will, I think it's gonna be really, really great. This is the box. It's actually a pretty cool box. You guys, you guys can see this pattern, right? This is the same um, kind of dot matrix pattern that you get on the back of the laptop display, which I think looks really cool, especially if you get it in the right light. Um, all right, so opening this sucker up. You can see the laptop is propped up. Now I did open this laptop up, install the drivers, update the drivers, and install the games and benchmark software. I have not tested anything. All I did was install the stuff and restart the laptop, stuff like that. It takes a few hours to get that going if you wanna get everything installed. So I just like getting that out of the way so we can do this, do so much more benchmarking and testing of the game. If this does come in a plastic wrap, so let's go ahead and take the laptop out and let's go ahead and take the plastic wrap off. You guys ready? Ready to hear this? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I love doing this. <laughs> It feels like Christmas. <laughs> All right, so uh, there's the plastic wrap off. And um, I also, I wanna mention that I, I do have a good amount of personal experience with the Zephyrus lineup because my girlfriend Carla, she uses a Zephyrus G15 that I bought with a 3070. That costs $1,800, so it was, 
a bit more expensive than this one. This one's uh, like the lo little bit lower on the budget, but that, that one didn't have a webcam. Um, that was probably the biggest gripe she's had with it since she bought it. Um, but or since I, I got it for her, but the, the, the thing is it's been awesome. Like it's, it's not had any problems pretty much, uh, except for one driver issue that she just had to update the drivers and then it went right away. It's nothing's broken on it. And it's, she's been using it full time as her laptop now for over two years. So good track record, in my opinion, for the Zephyrus lineup for at least build quality. Now the power cable is about six feet long. So it's about my full wingspan. And the the power brick is a 240 watt and it's fairly portable, pretty small uh, for a 240 watt. And uh, it feels nice and premium. You got also got a Velcro wrap here and it is an L shaped adapter so that it's a little easier to plug in to snake it around the side of the laptop. Now this guy is only about four feet long or so. So it's not quite as long as you would ideally want it to be. In my opinion, I would like this to be like six feet long as well, but at least the, the power cable is six feet long, so something is longer, making it easier to plug in uh, when it's off the table. Now, uh, let's do the box here. So I have not checked out what's in this box. So it's probably your typical warranty information. Zephyrus are pretty thin, right? Yeah, this thing is very thin. Uh, thin. It's like, uh, it is 0.81 thickness, so it is, much thinner than your typical laptop. And it's also very light for a 16 inch laptop being 4.4 uh, pounds. So very thin and very light. So you're talking about a laptop that should be judged in the more portable and light category. All right, in terms of its performance and all of that. So you can't really compare apples to apples with this one say against like an RTX 3070 that's like 150 watt or something, you know, from last year or a few years ago. So you gotta, you gotta keep that in mind, right? All right. So Asus warranty information, this should be a 12 month warranty, I believe. Safety precautions for your notebook battery. Congratulations on your Asus product purchase. Get started with self-service. They also have a, a warranty support straight through Best Buy. It's interesting. Please contact Best Buy or Asus for support. Interesting. So the, basically Asus is leveraging Best Buy in this scenario. I did buy this from Best Buy for $14.49. Link in the description if you want to check that out uh, or on the sheet. Um, but yeah, they got a, a, the phone number, I believe, is the Best Buy phone number for the support number included on there. So that's pretty interesting. Now, I've always had pretty good experience going into Best Buy and getting my products fixed. I've probably fixed three or four of my electronics over the last decade at Best Buy. You walk in, you wait in line for 15 minutes, you tell them what's wrong with it. If they can fix it, they take the device for usually a week or two, get it fixed and deliver it back to you. Let, you. let you know when you can pick it up. Or alternatively, if they don't think they can get it fixed, like a device is totaled and it's still covered under something like accidental coverage, they just give you a check, basically write you the, for the full amount of the pri uh, product's price, depending on the warranty. Like that, I usually buy the ex accidental warranty from Best Buy whenever I do buy the warranty, so. Microphone array, camera, camera indicator, display panel. The one thing that's interesting about this laptop is that the G16 is basically reusing or utilizing the same chassis as the Zephyrus M16 from last year, which had the webcam. This one has that webcam now. And uh, so you're getting some of those premium upgrades that the M16 had, but now in the G16 lineup. But we're not using a Ryzen processor anymore. We're using an Intel i7 processor, which, is a, a pretty big transition, in my opinion, from Asus. They're you know going away from the Ryzen series. The G14 series still still sticking with Ryzen, but the G16 is now Intel. Can you see it? There it is. The it's like holographic reflective. It's really cool when you catch it in just the right angle. As we do with these unboxing videos, we're gonna take the bottom off first. This guy is interesting because uh, they do have this rubber covers on several of these screws. You can lose those, but it's not really a big deal. So for this, on uh, removing the bottom, you're just gonna need a nice Phillips head, like smaller Phillips head screwdriver. Uh, nothing too special, helps if it's magnetic. These corner screws, uh, I believe at least one of them is a pop-up screw. So you probably wanna do those last. 
Okay, so we have a we have one pop-up screw over here on this side. This lifts up the bottom, making it easier to take the bottom off. We have three additional screws here in the middle. We gotta make sure we take out, because if you don't take these out, you're not gonna get the bottom off. <laughs> so, unless, unless these don't exist, and this thing's not coming up. So I'm using a plastic, a little plastic piece to try to get this to come up. Are there screws down here? There are screws. So you do have to get these little <laughs> rubber things off. I kind of wish they just didn't include these rubber things. Like, what's the point of these little rubber pieces? Like, none of the other screw holes are covered, and that's fine. Like, who cares <laughs> if these have real rubber covers or not? They're just more annoying to deal with, and they get lost. Beautiful. All right, so we should have all of the screws out at this point. Into the AM with the glorious T-shirts. Link in the description for 10% off. I do enjoy their t-shirts a lot, and you can too. They actually make a lot of different kinds of t-shirts, not just graphic tees, but I like, I like their products because they're really high quality. Just use a you know, guitar pick style first. It's not really making a noise, but I'm seeing a gap forming, so that's a good sign. And honestly, I to me, that's a premium feature, right? Sometimes you, Sometimes a really expensive laptop is super hard to take apart, and it's just really annoying. Like the GE78HX was, one of the harder laptops to take apart um, that I've recently taken apart. So, all right, so we got the bottom up. Ooh, oh, oh, I'm seeing some interesting juicy bits already. Interesting. All right, so let's start with the battery. We have a 90 watt hour battery. They did a good job pretty much of maximizing out the sizing of, uh, you know, utilizing all the space in this laptop, making it as compact as they could. We've got our speakers, down firing speakers here. I believe there are also up firing speakers on the left and right of the keyboard. Um, I, I'm not sure if we're gonna have good spatial audio with this machine, but I don't think we will most likely. We have our VRMs covered with a that's dedicated heat pipe here. The exhaust goes out four different exhaust areas, one on the right, one on the left, two along the back here. There is no third fan. It's a two fan uh, system. Look at this, shaboom, empty memory slot. It's gonna make for easy upgradability, but the downside is out of the box, you're only gonna have single channel memory performance, which is not gonna be as high of performance. Now, the nice thing is, if you grab another 16 gig stick, you get up to 32 gigs without having to throw any RAM away. So this adds nice upgradability, but a little bit slower performance out of the box. That's kind of a bummer and good thing at the same time, all right? So it's a mixed bag with this. Overall, I would prefer probably, if it came with dual channel 16 gigs, is probably the way I would prefer it to come but at least uh, I'm guessing the other stick is soldered onto the motherboard on the other side. What this means is essentially, since all 16 gigs are soldered, this gives you more upgrade memory, uh, you know, more memory upgrade capacity is what that gives you basically, all right? Now we have a second empty M.2 slot here and we have our 512 gig SSD right here. We're moving on to our thermal layout. We've got our GPU over here. We've got one dedicated GPU three shared GPU heat pipes right here that go on both sides of the fans. And then the VRM uh, heat pipe here goes across uh, both the VRMs for the CPU and the GPU. This heat pipe right here is dedicated just to the CPU. So both the GPU and the CPU get their own dedicated heat pipe. That's nice. The, these, these little foam things are also interesting. They actually help route the air they basically, you know, the bottom of the chassis presses against them and it helps route the in, intake of air. So I'm guessing this helps prevent, you know, taking in like residual warmer air. And so it just takes the fresh cooler air from the outside. That's, I like this. It's a nice little extra touch and I'm sure that helps improve the thermal performance of this laptop. Just a little bit more having these little foam rests. But you see that are kind of raised up here. Basically, it's gonna suck air just from the fan intake or maybe from this area. Maybe there's a keyboard intake right here or something. But most likely it's sucking air from the bottom as well as the keyboard. Our RAM, or sorry, our Wi-Fi, let's see what our Wi-Fi module is. Intel AX211NGW. All right, and that should give us, I believe it's a Wi-Fi 6E. I should double check, but I'm pretty sure that's a Wi-Fi 6E. It is Wi-Fi 6E and Bluetooth 5.2. Let's get the let's get the bottom back on there. 
All right, I think that's good. Um, overall, a very easy laptop chassis to take apart and put together, which is, uh, that's a good thing. That's a good thing. It makes it easier to upgrade, especially compared to some of these laptops these days. All right, so uh, one thing you should know about this laptop, if you don't know already. So when I raise this laptop up, notice what happens with the hinge. It raises the keyboard deck up to let more air under the fan area here. So it's a subtle change, but that will improve temperatures just a little bit. I like, I like Asus's ingenuity there, but today, as always, we'll still be raising the back up with my little trusty SSD. Do you guys hear that? That is the sound it makes when it boots up and you can change that sound. You can customize it uh, to be enabled or disabled. Here's Windows Hello, logged us right in, which is what we're looking for. All right, so let's go ahead and do a flex test of the laptop chassis. I do have it in white keyboard backlight mode right now, okay? This white keyboard backlight mode, I think just looks a little bit better than when it changes to like orange and red and all of that. But if you like multicolors, that's fine. This, but this to me looks classier, more like a MacBook Pro. And I think it should just be this color default out of the box, I think. Let's do the flex test. All right, so going around the corner, no flex, no flex, maybe a tiny bit of flex. Basically touchpad has just a little bit of flex as expected. You're not gonna press that hard on a touchpad normally though. Um, no flex, a little bit of bendy right here. No flex in the corner. Along the top, in the middle here, just a little bit of flex. Overall, very good, I think. And no flex, again, in the corner, solidly built in the sides. I love that. Going through the middle now, a bit of flex by the keyboard and touchpad as expected, but nothing extraordinarily bad or anything. Very good overall chassis rigidity for this price range. Above average, for sure. Why don't we go ahead and test the display next, right? I mean, uh, we got the display tool checker. I already got it installed. So let's find out how colorful it actually is when you measure it. Now, just because they claim it's 300 nits doesn't mean it actually is 300 nits. Sometimes it's more, sometimes it's a little less. But oftentimes those claims are given to the manufacturer by the display maker. And displays have varying quality levels, just like chips, you know, where some of them are slightly brighter or slightly dimmer than others. Your actual display stats will vary a little bit, but it should be within like your base minimums, should be close to 300 nits or higher. Yeah, okay, here we are. All right, so now my, my Spider 5 Elite, right? It underestimates color gamut by like a few, like usually I think about nine um, percentage points. And you can see we're getting 94% of sRGB coverage, 73% of Adobe RGB, 73% of the P3 color gamut. That's very good for the, uh, you know kind of a budgety laptop like this under $1,500. Um, our contrast ratio, uh, well, let's do our brightness first. At 0% was 14 nits. At maximum brightness is 284.4 nits. So not quite the 300 nit rating that they claimed does vary from laptop to laptop. Our contrast ratio was 1160 to one, which is very good, which will make images look a bit more punchy, just not quite as bright as the 300 nits rating, which is a little bit disappointing. We didn't pass 300 nits, but it's close to the manufacturer rated claim. I dock them just a little bit for being underestimating their, their nits or overestimating their nits brightness, but I wouldn't fault them for the color gamut being, you know, 94% is very good. And you can see, look at how colorful this display is on the camera. Like it is, it's a nice display that's gonna, you know, I think it's gonna make a lot of people pretty happy playing games on this. We have our power adapter port, our heat exhaust, HDMI 2.1, ethernet, uh, I believe it's two and a half gigabit ethernet. Let me, they don't say in here, what it is, and if they don't say, it makes me think it might be only gigabit. So I'm not sure about that. Ethernet port, it is upward facing, which makes it easier to get on and off. I like that orientation. We have a USB 3.2 Gen 2 Type A, and then we have two USB Cs, and one of these is a Thunderbolt 4 with power delivery. Okay, actually both of them support power delivery and they both are DisplayPort 1.4s. So you can do double displays out here 
And one of these displays goes to the integrated GPU. I believe the Thunderbolt here goes to the integrated GPU. And this uh, USB-C goes to NVIDIA graphics card. The HDMI also goes to the NVIDIA graphics card. So you can do your low power GPU, you know, like your integrated graphics presentations on you know battery life mode without running out of juice very fast. Uh, you've got your headset port right here, which is going to be a combo port for your mic and headphones. And then on the right side, you don't have much. You just got one USB-A and a micro SD card slot, all right? And a Kensington lock port, another port here. And then, you know, the rear exhausts actually do bounce off of the, the exhaust here. The exhaust, sorry, the exhaust bounce off of the display and the display does lay fully flat as well. So you can potentially use that if you're needing to present an image to someone or something, I don't know. I would, don't ever use it, but maybe someone out there does. So now you know. But uh, overall the ports on this are a little bit better than what's on the Strix series. Cause you have the micro SD card slot that you don't have on the Strix series, which is just kind of silly to me. Okay, so here is the Armory Crate software. I do like Armory Crate. It updates well, it updates quickly and easily, reliably, and it just works for me, all right? That's the big thing. Now, if you do press this button right here at the top of the keyboard, you can launch Armory Crate, all right? This, this launches the Armory Crate app for you. Um, this is also volume up and down, and you can mute your mic with that button as well. All right, and so the Armory Crate app allows us to do a lot of different things like change the performance mode. So you can do silent, performance, turbo. Those are the three default modes. And then you have manual fan mode. You can set your own fan curves here. You also have your PL1 and PL2 power limits. We're gonna set this up to maximum. We're gonna set our manual fans by dragging the left knob up, the left node up. And we're gonna do the left node up here as well and move all those up. Our base overclock on the GPU in manual mode is 50 and 100. We have a dynamic boost of up to 20 watts. We're gonna leave that enabled. And the thermal target says go all the way up to 87 degrees, but we're gonna probably be going higher than that even. Now this has eight gigs of GDDR6 VRAM with the RTX 4090. So I like that it has eight gigs. At 1080p, that should be enough in the vast majority of titles, but maybe not certain ones. Now GPU mode, you can switch between ultimate GPU mode, which focuses on uh, your GPU performance by disabling your integrated GPU. So you can no longer do GPU switching. Um, it's like a dedicated performance mode for gaming. Your standard mode is not gonna be too much different, but this allows you to actively switch between integrated graphics and your NVIDIA GPU, but your integrated GPU stays on eco mode completely disables your NVIDIA GPU, allowing you to assure that your NVIDIA GPU is not gonna come on and drain battery life. Now, under optimized, this switches between discrete and integrated GPU, all right? Okay, you can, right here is where you can turn off and on your boot up sound. All right, and so here you can turn off the boot up sound and you also have your Panel power saver, which when you, that's when you disable. Now you can change the color of the lighting in here. All right, so here you can change to breathing, static, strobing, and color cycle, or aura sync where you can sync with other devices. Um, overall, I do like the static white light. It looks good with this gray keyboard. Let us take a look at the keyboard backlight and keyboard layout. You can see that the keyboard backlight looks really vibrant and bright, and all of the functions are lit up, including the F1 and F2, F3, F12 keys, which is not the case on the Strix, um, which is a little sad. Now, when I zoom in here, you can see the uh, additional functionalities, like you can raise and lower the keyboard backlight brightness. You can change the fan mode with FN plus F5. Um, you can change the screen brightness right here with F7 and F8. You've got volume, the volume uh, up and down, and microphone mute, ROG, um, you know, the Armory Crate launch button right here. Um, over here on the right side, 
You do not have full size arrow keys, but they are very easy to press, easier than the Razor Blade series to press, in my opinion. And so I don't mind these that much. And if you press FN, then you can use home and page up, page down, which you can do that on the Razor as well. I do like this keyboard. It types well, it has good feel. Doesn't have a number pad, but this is a 16 inch device that's very uh, portable and fairly thin. So it's, uh, it's okay if it doesn't have it, I think. Beautiful. So we were going to do our Cinebench R23. Let's get that going. We're gonna hop into manual fan mode once again. All right, and I'm also going to open up the ultimate mode. We're gonna restart. We're gonna do all our testing in ultimate mode. So um, that way they can, uh, that way we can see the, the performance with the integrated GPU disabled. Okay, so let's do a single core run, or sorry, not single core, a multi-core run. Let's do a, a one run. All right, so we got 16,000. 888. All right, that's more than the Legion 7i that I had from two years ago. All right, that's very good performance. You're going to be able to play games on this very, very well. You're going to be able to multi multi core, multitasking workloads uh, very well. But the new laptops, the better ones, the most powerful i9s are doing like 30,000 or maybe even a little more, like 34,000 when you undervolt it and overclock it and stuff. So 167. 61 so basically the exact same test again let's get a 10 minute test going so our cpu package power is pulling 112 watts 110 watts so far averaging 100 watts uh, our temperatures are getting warm though we're doing 95 96 degrees 93 degrees on average the fan uh, the fans are on maximum fan right now and they are about as loud as your typical gaming laptop fans. So this is not necessarily designed to be a quiet laptop. It's designed to be a portable laptop. Um, but you can go into quiet modes with reduced performance. But we're not testing the laptop that way today. We are testing the laptop with max fans to get the most performance we can possibly get. We have 100 watts of power still being pulled by the CPU, 90 right now, 94, but it was doing 100 just a second ago. Um, we're averaging 97 watts for our entire duration of the test so far. That's very good. Our core temps on the CPU are 88 degrees though. CPU package is 94 degrees. Now this is excellent performance from a laptop that's this thin and this light, right? The Gigabyte G5, almost the exact same form factor as this one. We were thermal throttling at what? Like, it was, I think it was like 70, 70, 75 uh, watts. We were hitting night, like basically nonstop thermal throttle at 70, 75 watts. So we're doing 25 to 30 more watts through the CPU, and we're hitting just a little bit less on the temperatures, not quite thermal throttling. We're power limit throttling right at around 100. Obviously, if you want to have better CPU temps, you want to pull those uh, power sliders down in Armory Crate in the manual mode, you can do that. And so you can pull this down so that it doesn't hit 95, 100 watts all the time. Maybe you just want to hit 85 watts. You'll have a little bit less performance, but your temps are probably going to be in like the, the mid uh, high 70s, mid 80s, or something like that, if you were to reduce the watts on the CPU by about 15 to 20 or something. So... Um, you can tune this thing however you want, and you can tune the fan profiles in the same way, right? Like you can tune the print profiles so that they don't go to maximum fans. Maybe they only go 70, 80% on the fans, and you set the power limits a little bit lower on the CPU and the GPU, and therefore you can tune this to be as loud or as quiet as you really want, uh, depending on the user, all right? So let's take a look at our core clock speeds. We have averaged 4.2 gigahertz on our performance cores, 3.3 gigahertz on our four E cores. Um, this is, these are good clock speeds, uh, about the same as what we were getting on the i9 chips. It's just obviously way less cores than what you get on the i9 chip and less power throughput too. Like on the, the i9 chip, we're doing like 130 to 100, you know, 100, well, 190, almost 200 watts in the GT77. Uh, and then eventually, you know, throttles down to like 140, 135 in that range, depending on which laptop you're talking about. So um, yeah, this laptop is certainly not as power efficient as the newer i9s. Because at only a 100 
you know, we're averaging 96 watts of power, and the amount of performance you're getting for the same amount of wattage is not as nearly as high as those i9s that have 24 cores, 32 threads. That said, I mean, it, it really comes down to your budget, right? Those, those i9 processors are going to cost a lot more. Like the cheapest one uh, that I've seen is in the Strix G18 for $24.99. So not quite double the price of this. Uh, if you're after the most possible CPU performance, though, I believe the Strix G18 with that i9 is close to the peak for performance, in, in, including the overall package, I guess, with a, a nice display and a good GPU. Uh, that said, I believe the i9 is still going to come with the Strix G18 if you go with a lower end, C, uh, lower end GPU. So you might be able to go with like $1,800 for an RTX 4070, I believe, to get that same CPU. All right, so we got 16000 for our Cinebench R23 score, which is very close to what we were getting overall. Um, I think this is gonna be a great CPU performer for someone that needs to do some video editing, render some stuff. I'm looking forward to seeing how, uh, how it does in games though. Wow. The backlight bleed on this is actually pretty good. So I'm kinda, of, there's my laptop display there is kind of being reflective here, but I'm seeing a little bit of backlight bleed here in the bottom left corner. Very minimal backlight bleed overall. A little bit of backlight bleed in the right corner as well. Very good on the backlight bleed this year, or at least on this unit. It's not bad. It's gonna vary from unit to unit though. So this is a glass touchpad. It's very nicely sized. All right, and you got a nice sized wrist rest on the left and right. We're gonna see how much these heat up when we're playing games today. Um, I'll let you know. But uh, you know, when you're typing, Touching this touchpad is not a problem at all. Um, I, I do have accidental touches on my Blade 18 pretty often. But yeah, and then the click on this is really nice. I like the click of this touchpad probably the, the best on Windows touchpads, I think. It's, it's a very satisfying click. You cannot click it at the very top, but about 10%, 20% of the way down through the touchpad, it becomes easy to click again. Obviously, if you, t if you, if you click in the right side over here, it's a, it's a, two, uh, it's a right click. If you double tap as well, it's a right click, but it's large enough for uh, gestures and very smooth and easy to control this glass touchpad. Um, I like it. And the, the keyboard has nice travel as well. And it's a fairly quiet keyboard. So overall, I really like this keyboard and trackpad combo. It's excellent. Full screen 1080p, DLSS is on quality. Um, frame generation is enabled. Let's see how we, let's see how we do. All right. Hey, we're running. Okay, so looking at our power, we're doing 95 watts to the GPU. Oh, there's 102. All right, so we got at least over 100 for a moment, but only doing 98 and 45, looks like, 35 to 45 on the CPU. Look at our temps, though. Our temperatures are really good. 70 degrees, 72 degrees. Notice our VRAM is basically maxed out. You see that? We're at, we're at 7.5 gigs of VRAM. We only have eight, and there's always got to be a little wiggle room. You pretty much will never see the full eight being utilized. So we're not seeing any stutters, though. Our 1% lows are excellent at 69. Wow, our CPU utilization here hitting 100 watts for a moment there with all these NPCs coming out. This is obviously very smooth gameplay. Wow, our average FPS was 102. Hooey! So here is the MSI Katana. It did 109. This, this Katana has a 4070, but lower wattage. We only did nine, we only did seven more FPS with the 4070 versus this 4060. So. Such a little difference. And this one got 86 FPS, 85.7 FPS. Um, so we did we did 16 more FPS with this Zephyrus G16 than the Gigabyte G5, which is a huge performance gap given you're dealing with only eight gigs of RAM in the Gigabyte G5, that can limit things. And then it's also only single channel. This is also only single channel. But imagine if imagine if this had dual channel uh, we might even be pushing closer to that Katana number for performance. So this G16 is doing well, in my opinion. All right, let's go ahead and do the native resolution. Uh, 1920 by 1200. And uh, let's do another test. It appears that NVIDIA and AMD have a tough time with their latest GPU drivers. 
Noticeably increasing the CPU strain by NVIDIA container. Interesting. Well, I'm sure NVIDIA will fix this issue um, later. Okay, so that's only affecting after you close games, though. Maybe that doesn't affect while you're actually playing the game, you know? I don't know. That's interesting, though. Huh. Pretty interesting. I don't know. I, I'd have to actually see a specific example of it. I haven't noticed anything like that yet, but I haven't done too much testing. Okay, so we got 89.8 for our native resolution uh, for Cyberpunk. That's going to be very playable. So, so compared to 1080p laptops, going with a 16 by 10 then is going to take about 10 or 12 performance points, percentages, away from your FPS gains, right? So going 16 by 10 is more demanding on the GPU. Um, so it's very important to keep in mind. Let's go and do one run. Let's do, let's do another run with, I like, let's do ray tracing. Let's do no ray tracing. Let's do everything on ultra and we'll do DLSS on quality with frame gen. So everything's set to ultra with no ray tracing. Frame gen and DLSS on quality. Let's see what we get. So basically, if you're like, ah, I can live without ray tracing in this game, and uh, which in many games you can, but you still want to increase your frame rate, right? This is what you're going to do in a lot of budget gaming laptops, similar to this one, to increase your frame rate and get better performance. You know, if you're wanting to play closer to your 144 frames per second or 165 hertz display like this laptop has, and you want a smoother experience, then this is what I would do. I would disable ray tracing probably as the first feature um, or potentially use a lower level of DLSS, maybe down to balanced, but you go too far on DLSS, especially only at 1080p, it starts breaking up and having a lot of artifacting. So I wouldn't really recommend that. I try to keep DLSS on quality if at all possible, because it is much better in my opinion. Uh, any chance of reviewing the Strix G16? Yeah, I would love to review the Strix G16. I just, uh, I need to find it in stock, order that sucker, or get it from Asus, one of the two. I just realized that 87 FPS was with ray tracing. That's impressive, yeah. I do think it's very impressive. Frame generation really does boost the FPS and it really improves your overall experience without causing much artifacting or issues from my experience. Um, so let's see what we get. 124.5, it looks like. 124.55. So basically 125, we round up. Uh, for full HD plus, DLSS and quality frame generation set to yes. Now, uh, frame generation does cause increased the latency, but I still think it's worth using in single player games, but never use it for competitive games. Let's do no frame gen, no DLSS, right? No frame gen, no DLSS, no ray tracing, all raw. So 1440p, I think is a huge difference on a 17 or 18 inch display. On a 16 inch display, it is a difference. It is noticeable, but you do need the more powerful GPU to do it. Um, hopefully with more VRAM too, right? You want more VRAM, uh, ideally 12 gigs or maybe 16 gigs of VRAM to go to QHD gaming, because uh, the, the, the texture size increase is noticeable when you up the resolution. So, um, you know, like eight gigs of VRAM might be enough in Hogwarts uh, or in future games at full HD, but you go to QHD, only having eight gigs of VRAM, it's gonna, you'll be more likely to have to t struggle to, you know, down textures, or you may even run into scenarios where you'll never have enough VRAM for certain games that are poorly optimized and have bad developers that don't know how to optimize their textures, right? Um, so it really depends. Oh, interesting. Our, our GPU wattage is hitting above 100 now that we have ray tracing, DLSS, and frame generation off. Um, you know, those features, especially ray tracing, can be fairly CPU intensive. So that allowed our GPU to boost higher. And I love seeing that we're going over 100 watts in some in this game. And I'm curious to see if we'll see that in other games as well. Okay, so native resolution, native resolution, all of these settings set to off and disabled all the Nvidia stuff set off, uh, just ultra settings. Looks like we got 71.4. 
very good performance in Cyberpunk, extremely playable performance, right? Like that's the most important thing. You want to be able to play these games uh, smoothly and ideally at 100, like all max. Like if, if this can play all of these high demanding games at ultra settings here, I mean, it's such a great experience. We are at full HD plus, I believe. We're on ultra settings, DLS is on quality here. We wanna set this to 1080p so we can do our comparison. <laughs> Let's talk about this right now. We're getting very interesting results. Right now, I believe we are CPU bound, okay? We are pulling 75 watts on the CPU. 93% GPU utilization, 85%. We saw a lower even GPU utilization than this a little bit ago. But the key here is our CPU is also hitting high temperatures, 95, 97. So we're reaching, I believe, thermal throttling levels with our CPU right now. Our frames are good though, right? It's not causing massive stuttering, so that's good at least. That said, you may want to go in and manually set the power limit lower than what we're seeing right here if you want to have better CPU utilization here or better CPU temps in this game. That's more watts on the CPU than the thick razors this year sustain. Um, well, we haven't, I haven't tested this game yet on the Razer Blade series. Um, we'll have to see because this game really demands a lot on the CPU. Um, to, to reach full 100% GPU utilization is very difficult. Um, and we saw a really high wattage on the SCAR-18. We were doing like 120 watts through the i9 processor in dead space. So pretty freaking nutso, actually. Um, wow. I mean, this is extremely playable, obviously. Our 1% lows are very good. Let's do uh, some full HD plus. Do one pass with that. All right, and I wanna point out that right now, the wrist rest is getting a little bit warm and the WASD keys are also getting a bit warm. It's not as hot as what the Blade, Blade 16 was, but it's, it's definitely on the warm side. Here we go, we're on full HD plus now, 16 by nine or 16 by 10. So the native resolution of the display. And right now we are CPU bottlenecked it appears and we're pulling, it's pretty incredible that this system is able to do, like a system this thin and light is doing 165 watts right now through the system. It's pretty nuts for a thin and, <laughs> a thin and light laptop. Normally you're seeing more like 120 or 130 watts through a system like this, all right? So we are getting very high CPU temps overall, but the performance is surprisingly good. Wow, we only, this game are, th in this game we lost very few frames switching between the resolutions. And I believe that is because we were, um, that is because we were CPU bound rather than GPU bound. So the difference in switching the resolution did not affect us very much. Let's hop into God of War now. Well, let's do, let's do quality. And I wanna do 16 by nine though. Yes, 16 by nine. Okay, so it's gonna render at 1080p and I'll upscale it. It's gonna it's, it's gonna render at 16 by nine and upscale it to 16 by 10. That's fine, whatever. All right, we're on all ultra settings. We're hitting 115 watts on the GPU there, 103, 104. It's nice to see that we're getting wattages above 100. We're being GPU limited here. Um, we're hitting basically 199, 100% usage of the GPU. We got 6630. Let's do uh, let's do another run where we go to 16 by 10, and we'll do everything in the same settings, and we'll see what we get. Um, and we'll see because now that we're not we're not CPU bottleneck, so this game we should see less FPS. So at 16 by nine, we got 66. 30, 16 by 10, I'm expecting more like 60 or maybe like 62, somewhere in that range. I'm guessing 61, 62, all right. All right, so here we are. Wow. We're actually, 
Not doing bad. <laughs> what? We got 66. So 65. Okay, 65. So only one FPS difference going 16 by 9 to 16 by 10 there. Wow. I'm impressed. I'm actually surprised. Like, I was expecting more of a difference. And I, I got to see our temperatures in this game are excellent. We're below 80 on the CPU and the GPU with 98 GPU, 98% uh, GPU utilization, and our VRAM is good. So this game is obviously going to play extremely well with this laptop. So that's very, very good. This is a game where I probably would shoot for like a 90, um, 90 FPS refresh rate target. I did an extra jump there. We are swimming. Wow, okay. We're averaging 79 so far. I'm impressed. <laughs> it's impressive. Let's go, to, let's go to our full resolution through here with our 16 by 10 aspect ratio. So the first run, 16 by nine, we got 79, 41. I gotta say, this looks much cleaner of an image to me um being that it's uh now native resolution rather than a modified resolution it really makes a big difference for clarity maybe look into one of the water cooled laptops and if you're really in a really hot environment that's not a bad option um so that would be like the xmg laptops uh, like the xmg neo 16 and 17 um or maybe the electronics mech laptops both of those those are going to help really help cool down your CPU and GPU a bit better than just air, right? So 7950 for the full HD standard. That is excellent. All right, and DLS is on quality. Wow, okay, so we're already set with everything on max. Ray tracing's on ultra, ray tracing quality's on high, everything else is on ultra. Um, our texture quality is on ultra. Let's see, let's see if we get bad stuttering or not. I think we probably will. Um, but let's see if we get bad stuttering. Our, our, you can see right here, our DDR4 RAM is basically maxed out at 15 gigs. And we're just in the menu right now. So we'll have to see if that causes stuttering as well. But it should, I'm imagining it's going to limit some performance. And it shows you why getting 32 gigs of, of memory is a pretty smart idea. If you, haven't, if you haven't been able to tell yet, I'm definitely playing this game way better now than I was when I was playing it on the uh, the Gigabyte G5. Like, it's pretty interesting, actually, how big of a difference it makes right now. Um, not having the stutters from only one 8-gig stick of RAM. Like, this is playing really well overall. Um, the 1% lows are not amazing at 17, but the stuttering is not like big, big long stutters. They're like little quick ones occasionally, and they're not, not happening that often, so. Um, I wanna go to a daylight environment. That was a big stutter there, moving away from that area. Um, oftentimes when you move from one area to the next area, you get the big stutter differences. Okay, so moving into this area, we are also getting some kind of load in stutters. I think that's probably because of our, you know, our only 16 gigs of RAM. You know, there's only so much that this game can hold in terms of like in the memory at one point. Only 32 FPS right now. Let's see here. What is our issue? Um, we're getting 100% GPU utilization. Well, okay. So now that we're in the area for a little while, our FPS came up. I'm guessing this is the reason. We're hitting, um, we're maxing out the memory. I'm pretty sure. And now we, now that we, everything's loaded in, it took a little while to load everything in. Now that everything's loaded in, it's fine. Um, it also could be related to our VRAM as well. I am going to turn textures down to low just because that's the way we've been testing all these other laptops. 
Um, but it's interesting that the textures being on Ultra didn't kill us. Horrifically, at least. Let's see what the let's see what the performance is like now that we have lowered the textures down to low because that's going to help. That's probably going to help with our RAM usage and our VRAM usage, right? Because right now we're not bumping into the max VRAM um, anymore. Okay, so I have just reset it. Wait, we waited till daytime, right? Why is it? Um... We are definitely getting some stutters. I gotta say the darks right now are pretty dark. I think the speakers on this are very impressive. In performance mode here, um, notice our CPU and GPU watts are did drop down a fair bit, uh, but the fan noise is very quiet and we're, our temperatures are still looking pretty good for how quiet the fans are and the power we're putting through. Fans are still very quiet. You can definitely do gaming with performance mode. If you want to have better fan profile, that's probably the mode I would recommend. But we're going to jump back into manual fan mode again, which is going to max out our fans, do a slight overclock on the GPU as well. All right, so notice our, our, temp, our, our, our TDPs both jumped up like 20 on both the CPU and the GPU pretty much. It was for like 55, 60. Now we're up to 80 watts, and we were doing like 35, 40. Now we're doing 56, 60 watts on the CPU. All right, and our temperatures also can go a little higher now because we're raising the power limits above. All right, so let's go ahead and do uh, let's do a test. Let's do this at, let's make sure that our resolution is set to the right one. So right now we're at 1920 by 1200. And I really want to be doing a 1080p test, but let's go, let's go ahead and do this one for now. We may have to change our uh, native resolution on Windows in order to um, modify the resolution in this. We are definitely getting some stutters, as you'd expect, with only 16 gigs of DDR4 RAM. Um, and honestly, this game almost always stutters in Hogwarts, no matter what. Or sorry, in Hogsmeade. Okay, so we got 6616. Let's just verify nothing changed in our settings, but we should be at 1080p. Quality, frame generation enabled. Everything's on ultra except textures on low, including ray tracing. We're rocking ray tracing right now on ultra. All right. We are 1% low, did stutter there. This is obviously very playable frames though. On a 4060 laptop, I love to see it. And quite frankly, this is better performance than I was seeing on my RTX 3080. And that's just because of frame generation. Okay, so 7322. Um, 7322, we managed to get another 7 FPS, changing from Full HD plus 16 by 10 to 16 by 9. Because I'm thinking that we may run into issues if you were to, like, say, fly on the broom from area to area in here, only having 16 gigs of DDR4. So let's see. Let's see if we can run into that issue again now that we have the textures on low. I want to, well, so I'm just looking to replicate that issue, you know? We were running around here, and so far I'm not seeing that problem come up again. Now, obviously, if you were to turn off ray tracing and leave DLSS on quality and frame generation enabled, I would, I would be expecting in the ballpark of like over 100 FPS, like in the 120s range probably, which would be awesome, right? That'd be pretty sweet. Oh crap. So they have a yellow shield on, it means that we have to use our yellow uh, spell in order to kill them. Yee, we killed him. Beautiful. Okay, so the gameplay is much better now that we turned the the textures on low. I'm impressed. It's good. Um, this is better than the Gigabyte G5 for sure, and we're running into a lot less issues. And I would expect I would expect a noticeable bump in performance if we added a second stick of 16 gig. Um, or even an 8 gig stick in here to boost our our RAM size 
And then because it becomes dual channel, it should also become better performance as well. So, all right, so right now we're in high settings. We'll turn off V-Sync though. And we're at native resolution. Let's change that. Let's go 16 by nine for now. So we can do comparisons with other 1080p laptops. Okay, beautiful. Um, I guess high would be eight gigs of VRAM. We are in high mode, high settings. Let's see what we get in high settings. And then we'll switch it down to low. We should get a lot higher FPS when we switch to low. All right, so, whoa, okay, my setting, that should be good, okay. My mouse was not set to being sensitive enough. Um, I don't think I explained what the temps very well there. Um, what I mean is essentially Intel and AMD both say that their CPUs are not going to take any damage up to 100 degrees Celsius, right? So it's not that if you see like 90 degrees on your CPU in a laptop, oh my gosh, it's going to fry itself, it's going to fail. I really don't think that's the case. It's far more likely that your VRMs or your fans are going to go out before your CPU is going to encounter any kinds of issues. Even like five, ten years down the line, I don't think you're going to run into any problems. Now, if you're going above 100 degrees Celsius, that's a problem. Now, if you're hitting 100, you can also see thermal throttling, though. That becomes a bigger issue. Thermal throttling will reduce your performance and potentially cause 1% low stutters. So as long as you're not getting 100% 1% low stutters, it's not awful. Now, this is a very good display um, overall for responsiveness. I'm enjoying it very much. Let's try changing everything to low and see what we get. Okay, so we're going to reset and we're going to start this. So 200. Two sixty eight. This is a very responsive display with almost no ghosting. I like I don't see any ghosting hardly at all. I would play Apex Legends on this all day and be super happy pretty much. It's only 165 hertz display, but it's better than 144. Um, not as good as a 240 hertz, especially QHD display. But the frame rate performance is fantastic. And the display's responsiveness allowing you to track enemies is very good for a 165 hertz display. So I'm really enjoying this display. Okay, we got 106 that time. I think my record's 110, to give you an idea. That's very good. Ooh, we've fallen. There must be an enemy over there. Let's go over there to that guy. All the enemies are running away from us. I just want to get it, some clips killing a few people. All right, we got one. Okay, there's two people there. I don't want to deal with that. Haha, <laughs> should we get devotion? Oh, let's get the bow a try. The bow is fun. Oh crap, we're dead. <laughs> I had the OC loaded at startup without the power limit increase, then things became unstable. Yeah, I kept the old one for now, yeah. This PC or the GE66 i7, 12700H, and 3070 Ti, is it the same price, Jesus? You gotta give me the price too, because it's probably not the same price. Goodness gracious. There's just people everywhere up there. They're out for blood. Hey, 
<laughs> Alright, going up. I really wanted to kill that one guy. <laughs> Dang it. <laughs> I'm just trying to get a couple more kills. All right, I should really change to a short range weapon. Let's do a short range weapon. Uh, oh my gosh. Well, I didn't change in time. Oh my goodness. I can't see crap. Yeah, we got another kill. Okay. I feel like a little, little bit less of a failure. Oh, okay, we're dead. Uh <laughs> I think the biggest the biggest thing to keep in mind is just are you gonna play frame gen games? If you're gonna play games that have frame gen, I just feel like it's hard to pass up RTX 4000 series. If you're not gonna play games with frame gen, like you know you're just like you love Fortnite, there's no point in getting a fourth gen 4000 series um, when you can get a laptop with a higher quality display or build quality or cheaper. Um, price for the same level of performance. It's almost always that way. Previous gen tech is almost always a better bang for the buck, roughly compared to, um, you know, RTX. Uh, like the new generation is always a little bit more expensive, a little less performance per dollar, typically, than the previous generation. Now this year with the 4080 and 4090, it's a huge performance gap too. But with the RTX 4050, 4060, 4070 it becomes a lot harder to, to decide because some 4060, 4070 laptops are super overpriced. And then you get ones like this one where it's very moderately priced at 1449 um, with a good display, Windows Hello, portable form factor, and obviously very good gaming performance for full HD+. We're playing all of these games on maximum ultra settings with ray tracing at full HD+, and it's very playable and very good experience. And it's portable. And it's only $14.49. So, uh, holy schmoly, 10.6K. I actually was not expecting this to score this high. Because only a, 70, a 75 watt did 9,000. 100 and we were doing like 105. And wow, 10.63. Okay, so in this scenario, it becomes a little bit easier to definitely recommend this potentially over that GE66, as long as the GE66 is not cheaper. If the GE66 is cheaper, then um, then it still is pretty competitive. That is that is higher than I thought, um, for sure. What does a 130 watt 3060 normally score? I've got that for you right here. Let me pull it up. Um, so. Right here is a Time Spy graphics showing a bunch of different laptops that I have tested. And you can see that we got 8,959 on the Legion 7 130 watt RTX 3060. So um, this score that we got here is 2,680 higher or something like that, um, which is about a 20, so that's an 18.7% increase in performance. So basically 19% if you round it up. And this is not a max TDP 4060, right? This is not a max TDP 4060. I'm expecting now over 11K for a 4060 at max TDP. Cause this is only, we were doing like what? Like 105 to 110 Watts during that test for a lot of it. Let's do an overclock session real quick. All right, we're gonna do a quick and dirty overclock. We're going to loop the graphics test two in time spy. We're going to pull up MSI afterburner and we're going to slap a, we're going to try a 200, 500. And we're going to see if that's stable. 
It is higher than a full power 3060. Will a higher TDP 460 do any good is, or is this the limit? No, uh, we are not at the highest TDP limit. Right now we're doing like 105 to 108 on our TDP and a higher TDP 4060 should be able to hit 140 watts consistently in this test. So at 140 watts consistently, I would certainly expect higher clocks and even better performance. Let's see what we get. Right now our, our boost clocks are at 2565. We're pretty much locked around there, which is interesting. Our temperatures are phenomenal in Time Spy, doing only 68 degrees on this thin chassis. CPU temps are very good as well, but it's not a heavy CPU load in Time Spy. Pretty delicious option. Wow, our CPU utilization going up to 100 watts on that quick and dirty Time Spy uh, CPU test. Pretty nice to see that, being able to quickly jump between CPU and GPU loads. Sometimes they don't go as high as that. Okay, so we got 10,749 with our quick and dirty overclock. So not much of a gain there. Um, CPU score is also not amazing at only 9,458, but it's still good for a mid-range budget-ish kind of laptop here at 1449. Um, last test we're doing is a speaker test, and then we're gonna do a summary wrap up of everything for this laptop. Beautiful, so we're gonna set our volume to maximum with our hotkey here. And we are going to set our volume down here to maximum. And here is Roar by Peter Spacey. We're gonna do the mic about 10 inches in front of the laptop, kind of where you would be. All right, all right. Wow, that's better than I thought it was gonna be. All right, here's a Half-Life by Faded Aeon. I'm gonna try changing the profile here to music. Yeah, it was hard for me to tell. It was a very little difference with changing the profile, but I think dynamic sounded the loudest. Wow, okay, these speakers are really good. I would say they're just a hair behind what the SCAR 18 had. SCAR 18 had a little better clarity, a little better bass. Um, a little bit behind still, you know, obviously the, the Blade 18, Blade 16 are better than this, but I would say this is better than the Strix G18 and better than the Alienware M16. Uh, way better, obviously, than any of these other budget laptops like on the Katana or the Gigabyte G5. Like, these speakers are in a mid to high tier. Like, I'd probably give them an 8.2, probably 8.3, somewhere in that range. Like, a Scar 18 was like 8.7. The Blade 18 was a 9.5. So these are up there, and you can certainly use these to listen to your music, and it's going to sound really good. It's going to fill a room uh, with some high-quality audio. Okay, so let's recap everything. We didn't check out the webcam quality yet. Let's just pull that up while we're here. There we go. Okay, so you can see it's pretty dang grainy, not that high a resolution. Uh, your typical mediocre 
bad gaming laptop webcam, but it is Windows Hello compatible. So that's nice. All right, so let's start at the beginning. Taking this laptop chassis apart is fairly easy with pop-up screws. Um, it's thin, it's portable, it's lighter than the vast majority of competition. The TDP limits on it are lower than what you're gonna get on a thicker laptop with bigger, beefier cooling, but this thing only weighs 4.4 pounds with a 16 uh, inch display, 16 by 10. The display is also very good. As you can see right now, it's very colorful. It's a vibrant, bright display. It's not as vibrant or bright as the newer 500 nit, 100% DCI-P3 color gambit displays, but this thing is still uh, way better than many of the competition uh, in like the thousand to $1,100, $1,200 pricing categories. Uh, very, very good overall display. 165 Hertz, full HD display, very responsive in Apex Legends. I could aim and shoot really, really well without any kinds of issues. The keyboard feels great. It's not quite as premium as what you get on something like the Blade 18. It's not mechanical, but the feel is good. The layout is good. No number pad. The touchpad is phenomenal. The, it's, it's got a great click. It's got a good size. It's a glass touchpad, large enough for multi-touch gestures. Um, the Windows Hello worked really well overall for me. I didn't have any issues. This is gonna be phenomenal. Like we were running ultra settings, ray tracing on, everything was playable, even at maximum frame rates or uh, maximum settings. Uh, I like that it's the new new version basically of the Zephyrus M16 in a 16 inch chassis that's more like more uh, approachable price tag at 1449. I feel like 1449, this is very good value. Um, even against RTX 3000 series laptops, it's got 10.6K uh, in time spy, which was higher than I was expecting. And uh, now I think you can still potentially get more raw performance from a 3070 or maybe a 3070 Ti laptop at around the $1,500 price point but it's not by that large of a margin. And the 3000 series doesn't have frame generation. And in frame generation games, this laptop will basically double the performance of the 3070 Ti in games like Hogwarts, uh, Cyberpunk, stuff like that. So the gameplay in single player games basically is gonna be phenomenally better. If you're an esports player, I would say go for an RTX 3000 series instead. I went over a ton of options at the beginning of this live stream uh, that are good competitors to this. I think the MSI Pulse 15 has a lot of potential. The Legion 5 for the 3070 Ti has a lot of value to it uh, right now. It's probably the best competitor at around $1,500, I think, with this machine, but it's 3000 series. So if you're a single player gamer, I'd probably recommend this over that. But if you don't just play single player games and you do a lot of esports games or other types of uh, games that where frame generation is not supported, uh, I do think the Legion 5 is probably a little better choice than this. Um, from a raw performance perf uh, standpoint, but from a like usability standpoint, this has Windows Hello. This has um, a really nice display overall and a nice portable form factor, right? Uh, battery life on this, I think is gonna be, you know, it's not 90 watt hour battery with an i7, less cores. Depending on how you optimize it, it's in the three to five hours uh, for web browsing, but I'm sure you can get more than that, maybe four to six hours if you optimize it really, really well. Um, I need to do more distinct, more actual detailed testing on the battery life, but yeah, I'm thinking it's gonna be in that ballpark. Definitely four to six hours in that range for most users in typical use scenarios, uh, but it might be as low as three hours if you're just completely unoptimized, right? Like your maximum brightness, um, on your on the integrated graphics, right? If you're gaming on this thing, you're looking at maybe like hour and a half, if that, right? A hour, hour and a half. Uh, when gaming, it, the performance is gonna be not that good. Um, the keyboard backlight on this is also very good. Uh, the port selection on this machine is better than the Strix SCAR 18. I, it doesn't make sense to me why they would do that. Uh, but Asus puts better ports on this thin and light portable than they do on the SCAR-18. It has a micro SD card slot. Other than that, the ports are very similar. Um, and the ports are pretty good. I give them like, I think like an 8.5 out of 10. Um, and so uh, they could still be better by a bit, but for the laptop size and portability factor, it's very, very good. Um, and I think for liability wise, 
And style-wise, this is a very businessy type of design with very minimal RGB. Uh, and it's got this nice holographic back. Some people are gonna like that. Some people are gonna hate that. Uh, but I think most people just kind of like this. It's got a nice little added touch that um, that Asus does. And so, yeah, I absolutely can recommend this laptop. Uh, I give it, I don't know, like a nine out of 10 overall. It's very, very compelling co package overall uh, with very well-rounded device. Good inputs, good ports, good enough display, uh, great overall performance to basically kill 1080p gaming very, very well. Um, and really what it comes down to whether you should get this laptop versus another one is what is the price to performance ratios and what kind of other key features does that laptop have versus this laptop? So yeah, that's kind of my thoughts uh, about this laptop. Uh, Chris says, is 1080p gaming a good experience? Yeah, I think 1080p gaming is a great experience. I did 1080p gaming on my laptops uh, and 15.6 inch laptop display sizes, even 17.3 inch laptops display sizes for many years without any problems. It still looks good. It's a great overall experience. I do think QHD is a slightly better experience, but usually you're gonna have to pay a premium price for that increased resolution. And also when you jump up to the QHD resolution, you're paying a uh, premium in like the frames that you lose. Cause it, at, at native 1080p, you're gonna be getting significantly higher frames than what you do at full HD plus, like on this laptop. So you're gonna get, I think a really great blend of performance, portability, everything about this laptop uh, is gonna be, I think very good. And it's just, it's a, it's a good, decent bang for the buck with good all around performance, I can recommend it. That's my, that's my review right now. I hope you guys enjoyed the live stream. I'll update you guys with new data or information if I run into it. I'll see you in the next one.